It's Friday, and you know what that means. Another episode of Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to this here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. In this week's podcast, we're diving deep into the world of artificial intelligence with Jonathan Gaifman from DESI. Jonathan and I are talking about using AI itself to craft the next generation of AI, how developers can streamline AI development, and where AI is headed in the future. But first, it's time for a little news you may have missed. Machine Learning at the Speed of Light edition. So what if photonics could help us better recognize patterns for machine learning? Well, new research from an international group of researchers that included members from the University of Pittsburgh Swanson School of Engineering, the University of Munster in Germany, and the Universities of Oxford and Exeter in England, as well as EPFL in Switzerland, and the IBM Research Laboratory in Zurich are looking to do just this. Their goal was to examine the potential of using photonics processors for AI applications. And their results were pretty awesome. Their research showed for the first time that photonics processors can process information in parallel, and they can do it super fast. Nathan Youngblood, assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Pittsburgh Swanson School of Engineering and co-lead author, explains their new research like this. This new processor would allow it to run multiple calculations at the same time, using different optical wavelengths for each calculation. The challenge we wanted to address is integration. How can we do computations using light in a way that's scalable and efficient? So the key here is actually the combination of photonic structures and phase change materials to store data in a non-volatile manner without requiring a continual energy supply. Another important first for this study was that this team was also able to calculate 16 different wavelengths simultaneously because they were able to combine these optical memory cells with a chip-based frequency comb as a light source. And on top of that, they used this new technology to create a neural network that would recognize handwritten numbers. And what they found was that this method gave them never-before-seen data rates and computing densities. Johannes Feldman, graduate student at the University of Munster and lead author of this study, puts their results in perspective like this. The convolutional operation between input data and one or more filters, which can be a highlighting of edges in a photo, for example, can be transferred very well to our matrix architecture. Exploiting light for signal transference enables the processor to perform parallel data processing through wavelength multiplexing, which leads to a higher computing density and many matrix multiplications being carried out in just one time step. In contrast to traditional electronics, which usually work in low gigahertz range, optical modulation speeds can be achieved with speeds up to 50 to 100 gigahertz range. Wow, now you're talking. So, as you can undoubtedly imagine, this kind of fast processing from a number of different inputs would be great for applications like autonomous vehicles, But this team thinks that photonics processors could also very easily support other applications like computing and medical imaging as well. Senior co-author Wolfram Pernice at the University of Munster sums up this research quite well. He says, 
light-based processors for speeding up tasks in the field of machine learning enable complex mathematical tasks to be processed at high speeds and throughputs. This is much faster than conventional chips, which rely on electronic data transfer, such as graphic cards or specialized hardware like tensor processing units. So, if you want even more information about this super cool photonics processors for machine learning study, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com, including their research paper published in Nature about this topic called Parallel Convolutional Processing Using an Integrated Photonic Sensor Core. All right, it's time to bring in Yonatan from Desi. Let's go. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Thank you for hosting me. Okay. So we're talking about the future of deep learning today. But Jonathan, before we get started, can you tell my audience and myself a little bit about your deep learning company, Desi? Somewhere two years ago, we started Desi in the vision of making deep learning more scalable and helping companies to take deep learning into production scalable products because deep learning is a very sophisticated technology with a high requirements from the computational side. So we thought about how can we boost more, get more from deep learning and models on their way to production. And we came up with Desi's technology called Autonac which is basically an automated technology to build and design deep learning models to get a better performance from those models on their way to production. So, Jonathan, you have a unique vision about using AI to craft the next generation of AI. So tell me more about this vision. And do you think this approach will make AI more applicable to other industries in the future? So let's start with how people are building AI today. And we, when we're talking about deep learning, we are talking about very complex models that are involving several types of layers connected together, ending up with a complex deep learning neural architecture. And all the time we see new papers uh, inventing new architectures and new types of models for new tasks. But this process of building new deep learning architectures is a manual process at the moment that involves trial and error iteration, building some kind of architecture, training it, changing it again, training to see the results now. And we are looking on the automation of this process by a technology that is called a neural architecture search. It's a search algorithm that's able to find a specific and optimized structure for a neural network. This technology is kind of a family of algorithms that started from Google in 2018. But the difference from what Google are, are doing is that this technology is much, much more efficient how it leverage the DESI and can run in days instead of months of, of GPU time. So in the basic concept, the, the Autonac technology, our technology is able to design the optimal structure of the neural network that will get the user who is the data scientist to, to a specific level of accuracy but will also optimize the structure of the neural network to perform well on a given hardware. So if a user wants to build deep learning to run on edge devices or on smartphone, it would be a different structure, a different type of model and architecture compared to a model that's supposed to run in the cloud. And we are enabling them to kind of do automatically this design in order to, to optimize and design models that, that are optimized for the data that they're using and for the hardware that they are going to use in production. So, Jonathan, how do you think developers can streamline AI development? Basically, today, they are using kind of academic papers and open source that they find on, on GitHub. And this is nice, but I think that the future is to provide them tools to streamline the process of, of designing and finding the right model to use. We know kind of the model selection problem to find the right model for this specific problem after getting a big enough data set. This is what most of the data scientists are, are spending most of their time. And this is kind of a manual process to find the specific best model for the use case. And by automating them that and providing them to search among models and find the right model for their use case, I think that this process of, of designing and, and building deep learning solutions will be much more streamlined than the trial and error iterations that data scientists are doing today 
towards the best model that they can build. And this is, as I see, the, the way to build tools to help data scientists build models faster and get better results. So, Jonathan, let's talk about the future. Where do you think AI is headed in the next couple of years and decades to come? That's a good question. I think that many people are afraid about AI replacing some people in doing their work. I think that the first phase will be AI that's helping people to do their work. So we are not seeing autonomous vehicles as soon as expected. And I think that the first stage is having AI as something that helps us do our own job. So we can see it in robotics. We can see it in driver assistance systems. We can see it in many, many applications where the first applications of AI coming to help people do their job better. Uh, and this is kind of the, the first stage of the coming five years in, in my perspective. After that, we, we will see a new all types of applications that can make us more productive, let us manage our time better, let us communicate better with products and with people. And this is kind of the, the far future. We will not have kind of language barriers in talking with other people and will not have some difficulties in manager of times and calendar and stuff like this because everything will be automated by AI helping us to live a life in more efficient and pleasant way. That makes sense. All right, Jonathan, it is time for your off the cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, I'm going to throw our standard question right now at you. So a lot of people can't have their favorite foods right now because we're in some sort of lockdown. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if the restaurant is closed, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? That's a good question. I think that really Italian food, like traveling to Italy to eat Italian food is something that I miss the most. So I don't care if it will be a pizza or a pasta, but having a good one like they have in Italy is something that I'm looking for after COVID. I love it. That sounds wonderful. Well, Jonathan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow me or us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. And please, five stars, too. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 27th, 2021, I'm Amelia Dalton. And you've been fried.